What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the show. So I have an interesting video to show you about social security. Now this video was posted about four years ago, but it is still relevant today. And that's why I wanted to play it because you're gonna hear some people talking about social security and how to reform social security, what needs to happen. And I just think it's interesting because even four years ago and, and even back further than that, but four years ago, they knew that this was a problem. They knew we needed to move forward and, and make some, some changes. And you had politicians just sit on their hands. And so maybe we're at a point now in 2023 where they can move forward and, and do some type of reform to Social Security. But it's interesting just to look back and look at how people were talking about Social Security and needs reform back then. And they're continuing to talk about it now. And so that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But first off, if you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification and then click all by clicking all you'll get notified. Anytime we post a video, we do daily videos here. So by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. Okay. So this is from reason TV. Now uh, let, let's go ahead and play it. And I will stop along the way and just talk about a few things because there are some things that I think, when, when he was interviewing uh, some of these people, he wasn't being completely transparent with what he was saying. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. I will try to limit the amount of times that I stop the video because I know it does get a little distracting when I do that. Here we go. Social security is running out of money, but don't worry. Our presidents always say they will strengthen and save Social Security. Safeguard Social Security. I'll save Social Security. Except, unfortunately, none will really save it. Here's the problem. Years ago, government made us a promise. Social Security is a program you can count on now and in the future. Even if you don't save for your retirement, government will save for you. We are with you through life's journey. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. But the program doesn't secure tomorrow. The politicians misled us. They didn't save your Social Security payments. They spent every penny the moment they came in but most okay now this is this is the part that i don't agree with what he's saying okay because he's saying this and when he starts to interview people it, it gets to the point where if you're not giving them the complete information then of course they're going to think yeah this is a big problem why are they spending our money but he's not saying where the money is being the money is being spent yes but that money is being spent on the people who are currently receiving social security benefits he's not saying that and that's the way the program was designed so you pay into the payroll tax and that money doesn't go into a vault somewhere it's actually spent it's spent on the people who are currently receiving benefits but he doesn't go into that and that's something that's important that's an important uh, aspect to know when it comes to social security people don't know that. What happens to that money? Well, hopefully it's held in trust. Actually, they spent it. So what's there going to be for me? When politicians began old age programs, they assumed there'd be enough young workers to tax to cover the cost of sending checks to old people, people like me. But people like me are living longer these days, so there aren't enough young people to pay for us. As a result, Social Security is going broke. This year, it went into the red for the first time. Well, there is a plan. Okay, so, and this is another thing that I don't really like. Now, understand, this is four years ago that they put this video out, but still, the information was the same when it comes to uh, the, the talk of Social Security is going broke. So if, if something is going broke, in my mind, it's going down to zero. So there won't be any benefits left. There won't be any money for benefits left. But that's just not true. We know the trust fund, the trust fund is in the red now. And when it comes to the trust fund, like the, the lady was that was being interviewed, she was talking about, I think the money goes into a trust fund. Yes, it goes into a trust fund. And that we used to have a surplus in that trust fund. Now we don't have a surplus anymore. And that's why they're drawing from that trust fund. And that money is is actually uh, being spent every year. And so that's why they're talking about in 10 years, that trust fund will no longer have money. And so that's the important thing to understand. The trust fund could go bankrupt, but the program itself will still be around because you still have people working, you still have people paying into the payroll tax, and so that money will still be going to Social Security. The only way that Social Security will completely go bankrupt, to go to zero, is if we have no one in the workforce paying into the payroll tax, then it will go to zero plan out there to save it, but it requires some tough choices. The Heritage Foundation proposes cutting payments to rich people and raising the retirement age to 70. 
even back four years ago, they were talking about raising the, the retirement age to 70. At least you had the Heritage Foundation. You had some of these other organizations that were talking about raising that full retirement age. And you had politicians also talking about raising the full retirement age to 70. There are some common sense tweaks that we can common make. Common sense to you, you're young. Well, you know what happened is that when Social Security actually was founded, life expectancy was below 65. The purpose of the program was to protect those few lucky ones that outlived everybody else. So today, the vast majority live past 65. Social Security now has a $32 trillion shortfall. You expect to collect Social Security from the government? No, I doubt it. I suppose it's progress that this was the first time talking to people on the street when most people understood the problem. It's just a question of how much money we're going to print or borrow. I mean, we're already at a trillion dollars a year. Social Security is kind of like the Titanic, a ship heading for an iceberg. This is a massive ship that moves very slowly. If we start making reforms now, we can avoid the iceberg. If we wait until we can see the iceberg right in front of our noses and then we try to turn the ship, we're going to run right into it. Medicare will hit its iceberg in just eight years. Then benefits will automatically be cut. Social now, just so you know, Medicare, they just the, the latest information when it comes to Medicare, and this was just last week, they said that it will last until 2031. So it's going to go a little bit further than than what's showing here. But what's shown here was four years ago that, you know, that was the information that they had four years ago. Security will hit it in 15 years. What's to be done? The Democrats say spend even more. You don't cut Social Security, you expand it. Nearly every Democrat in the United States Senate has voted in favor of expanding Social Security. Human wants and needs are unlimited. There's always another need, another program that needs more funding. And pay for it by taxing rich people. That's part of uh, my commitment to raise taxes on the wealthy. Just tax the rich. There isn't enough money even that the rich would have to pay for the 200 trillion in unfunded liabilities that we already have on the books. So where young people worry, do you ever think about Social Security? I actually don't. I'm still, I still feel like I'm too young to know about it. But. When you're old, how are you going to support yourself? I have no idea. It's a failed system, really, because it's, it's almost like a big Ponzi scheme. One partial solution proposed by Heritage and others is to let workers put some of their Social Security money into personal retirement accounts. Just imagine being able to own and control your own retirement dollars. They could invest it in businesses that could grow the economy, whatever rocks your boat. Private accounts would almost certainly pay you more than Social Security. Even a conservative portfolio of stocks and bonds that got you about a 5% annual return, you would make many times more. Private accounts have been tried in a few countries. The investment they created helped Chile rise from one of the poorest countries in Latin America to the richest. And yet, private accounts are still a hard sell. Even in Chile, left to subject to capitalists getting a cut of the pie. The demonstrators are calling for an end to the management of pensions by private financial institutions. We lack gratitude for what the free market provides. That is difficult to wrap your head around. It's easy to think, oh, here is the government, this is where I go. Private accounts are also unpopular in America. We will never let the Republicans cut or privatize Social Security. We won't allow cuts to Social Security or Medicare. What you guys are pushing is the right thing to do, but it's not popular. It is not popular, but I think people don't fully understand how these programs work. What happens to that money? It goes into a pool, I guess. You know they actually don't keep it in the trust fund, they spend it right away? Didn't know that. When I get my paycheck, a lot of it goes to taxes and I see the social security part of it and it's like $30 of my whole paycheck. You would rather keep that 30 bucks and put it in your own savings account? Yeah. I would. The country's in a deficit. There's a point where you can't pay out and go in the negative forever. She's right. Far better to fix old age programs now 
rather than have them suddenly go bankrupt later. So what did you guys think about that? Now, I, I was paying attention to the young lady at the end there that was talking about and when she when she works, she sees the, the taxes coming out and going to Social Security. And he asked her, would you rather keep that $30 yourself? And she was like, yeah, I'd rather keep it and, and do something with it, invest it, do whatever. Now, what is not being talked about and what the Heritage Foundation didn't talk about is the fact that if you want to privatize Social Security, you're going to be taking money out of the program. If you take money out of the program, how do you pay for the people who are currently receiving benefits? That's the big issue. So you might say, yeah, let, let's let people invest money. That sounds good. Okay, well, they're going to be taking money from the program, and so they're not going to be able to, the Social Security Administration will not be able to pay the same benefits that they're paying to the current beneficiaries. And so that that's where the big problem comes. And so if you want to do something like, and I've talked about this before, if you want to raise the payroll tax across the board and then allow some of the excess money to be invested, that's different than saying, no, we should allow people to invest the money how they see fit. Now, another thing when it comes to investing money and the reason why you have some organizations and some politicians really pushing privatized social security and pushing the strategy of letting people invest their own money. The reason for that is because businesses went out. Corporations went out in this situation because now you're taking that money from social security and you're actually investing it. So you have managers, people managing the money, they're going to make money as well as businesses are going to receive more money. These corporations are going to receive more money through investing. And so that that's the reason why you hear politicians talk about that because they know it's good for business. It, it, I mean, we can, we can argue it's good for our economy as well, but the only thing is if we had a system in place like that, you're taking from the people who are currently receiving benefits because that money is not going to the social security administration anymore. It's getting cut off and it's going to be invested by the average Joe, the people who are working, they're going to invest that money. And then when we have to look at long term, so it's it would be much like another 401k that you would have. And so you would be able to have your regular 401k and then you'd have this social security investment fund. And then when you get older, you hope that that money will outlast you. And so it will only last as long as the money that you have invested. So that that's a, that's something else that needs to be talked about. Right now, we know Social Security, you're going to receive that for the rest of your life. And so I wanna know what you guys think about all this. So let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.